I know a few people had been asking to see the upgrade system and wanted to give this LP a little final epilogue, so here we are. Velvet Assassin's menu system. First up, we've got our mission map, showing us some fairly pertinent information, question marks that suggest there might be a boat here, and some kind of windmill. Overall, the mission usually directs you rather linearly, so this isn't all that useful, save to further Violet's creepy scrapbooking. I've chosen the Boof because any mission after this has the Morphine stat locked off. You can see here that I have four points in it currently, and adding another will further increase the duration of the Morphine high. Stealth, meanwhile, is pretty self-explanatory. More skill points in Stealth means you creep faster. Very useful, so maxed out as quickly as possible. Strength is useful on our first run through because it lets you take more damage. That's about it, and since I generally don't get hit, I don't generally sink points into it until endgame. You can see our level difficulty, normal. The only difference is higher damage in Agent, the harder difficulty. Leboof is the 10th mission, so 9 completed is about right. Objectives, collectibles, and for every 1,000 experience, we get a skill point. Our inventory shows that we've picked up for gear. Here's our trusty knife, excellent and suited to killing enemies. A flashlight that I almost never used. If we had any further guns, this is where they'd be chilling out. And here are all the collectibles I've grabbed so far. I think I have at least one of each. So if you want the description, you can go ahead and pause the video. For the most part, I explain the distinct ones throughout the LP. Most of the descriptions really outline that Violette is looting the spoils of war just as hard as she can, which is nice. Uh, beyond that, we've got the options menu where you can map your keys and mess with the mouse sensitivity, your usual jazz. All of the actual video rendering is set up in the pre-game launcher. And that's about all I've got for Velvet Assassin. I think it's a good way to kill time, but it suffers from being a little overly ambitious given the small team that developed it. Had they gone with an existing engine, spent a little more time in development, or added in some form of interaction beyond a vigorous stabbing motion, I think it could have been a good game. Unfortunately, it uh, doesn't look like we're going to see what they would have done with a sequel. And as far as what's next for me... 